Tonight on the education of Max Bickford. The mall is to be built on an historic site. How did you land on a city planning committee? This is a developer. A slick-talking snake oil salesman. What are you going to do if you get turned down in Quinlan? What would you do if you were me? Drink poison. If I didn't know better, I'd think you two were married. Are you for or against the shopping mall at the Glen? What have you been up to? I'm going to send out the St. Bernard's. The is broken. Only got half the windshield clear. Well, that's because of that car's nine years old. Hey, Dad, um, Ben's been taking Taekwondo lessons, and I was wondering if I could do it, too. Taekwondo, what is that, uh, self-defense? Well, martial arts is a lot of cool stuff. Balance, reflexes, self-discipline. It'll really help me when I try out for hoops again next year. Yeah, okay, great. How much do you need? Well, it's only 400 bucks. What? For that kind of money, I could teach you myself. Here, here. This is the angry goat. Pretty good, huh? It's okay. It's no big deal. Okay, it's only money. Sign up. I'll put it on the credit card. Seriously? I follow you, grasshopper. But the principles of those 17th century town hall meetings still apply today, particularly in local government. Which is why I presume Professor Bickford forced you to attend our tedious planning committee sessions. <laughs> tedious? Who is he kidding? He loves this stuff. Gives him a chance to work out his Daniel Webster fantasies. <laughs> I may not have Webster's oratorical skills, but I know how to use procedure to slow the gears of democracy and limit its damage. Won't the city council approve the plan anyway, after it clears your committee? If I stall it long enough, it will never get to city council at all. <laughs> Victory! I bet the developer of the Founding Fathers Mall doesn't see it that way. Of course not. But our precious colonial architecture would be homogenized by a generic mall. But wouldn't it be a boon for business? Not Quinlan's local businesses. They'd all be driven out. Not to mention one more significant fact, which is that the mall is to be built on the Glen, which is an historic site. But nothing really happened there. George Washington didn't fight there. He just retreated. To save the lives of his men. After being hounded by the British, his exhausted army made camp at the Glen. Washington stood, cold, dirty, gunpowder in his nostrils, and watched his weary men sleep. The next morning, they regrouped and went on to fight another day, and eventually drove the British from these parts. Isn't that worth preserving? I now give the floor to Ms. Elkins from the Quinlan Preservation League. We at the League would like to remind the committee about the dangers of sprawl. Quinlan currently has seven stoplights on Main Street. Building this mall will extend our city limit. If I may, I just want to Actually, add... Actually, you may not, Mr. Parnell. You've already had your chance to speak. I'm sick of your stalling, Professor. I resent your accusation. If we lose this thing... Moving on. I call for a vote. Let's vote. You can't call for a vote. Only the chairman can, which is me. Now sit down, Bill. I said sit down or I'll cancel this meeting right... Bill, are you all right? No. Uh. Well, I know politics is supposed to be a blood sport, but this is a bit much. It's devastating, Max. No one feels worse than I do. But this might buy us some time. Yeah, another week and I'd have to fake a heart attack. Who's going to replace Parnell? So how did you land on a city planning committee? Arthur Jameson recommended me, and Larry Palmer made it official. Larry Palmer? Who's Larry Palmer? The mayor of the town you live in. Ah. 
So you're Clarence Thomas to Arthur Scalia. I like to think of myself as David Souter, the Maverick. Oh, does Arthur know that? He obviously pitched you because he knew you'd do his bidding. Oh, he did not. He knows I'm my own man. So what, you are going to vote to build that hideous mall? I didn't say that. Then you're doing his bidding. I am not doing any bidding of any kind for anybody. I have not even seen the blueprints yet. Don't get so defensive. I agree with you. About what? That building a mall would destroy Quinlan's small-town New England identity. Well, you're agreeing with something I haven't said. Then I'm saying it. Take the Victory Diner. It's authentic. Our high school football schedule on the menu. Our bowling trophies on the wall. Yes, it's, it's vintage, small-town New England stuff. Yes, it is. Not to mention the historic significance of the Glen itself. Exactly. On the other hand, we don't have a decent movie theater. So what are you saying? You would trade classic Americana for a Cineplex? trade this conversation for a classic New England witch burning at this point. Uh, listen to me. I am inclined to preserve the culture and history of Quinlan, of course, but I have an open mind. I'm going to receive information. I'm going to make an informed decision. Fine by me. But you're going to have to develop a thicker skin, Max, if you want to be a player. You don't really think students come here because of Quinlan, do you? According to our admissions survey, it gives our campus a classic timeless feeling. No, they don't spend any time there? Doesn't matter. Losing the small town feel would still hurt our enrollment. Regardless of how it would affect us, I think it's a bad thing for Quinlan. Think about it, Max. Can Quinlan sustain a mall this size? What happens if it fails in, say, five years? Luckily for everyone involved, Art was able to stall this thing. You know he got me my job at Chandler. Really? So he's to blame. He's usually more insightful. <laughs> his last book. Did you read that? About his wife's death. Not yet. It's about her final illness, uh, their last journey together. It's stunning. You know, to be honest, I think he's a little lost without her. It's so great to be back on campus. You shouldn't be such a stranger. I should come back here and teach. Oh, I'm happy to be out to pasture. <laughs> Do you have time for lunch? Well, unfortunately, I have a ton of unfinished work, mainly because of you and your committee. Duty has its cost. Well, from what I've seen of that committee, I'll be lucky to get out of there alive. <laughs> <laughs> I have an ambulance standing by. So, Professor, which side are you on? Isn't the next meeting this week? Well, I'm actually undecided. A lot will depend on these. These are impact studies, both Economic and environmental, pro and con. Hard to believe it's the same project. Yeah, so who's telling the truth? Well, not the developer. He'll say whatever it takes to get the money. Oh, because environmentalists never manipulate an issue. If they do, it's for the greater good. And giving people jobs is bad? What if both sides are right? Oh, please, those sleeves. Tea hookers never care about the... Oh, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. You know, instead of mocking each other, why don't we have a mock committee hearing next class? Karen... You take the tree huggers and Nilu, you the sleaze bags. Admit it, Max. You love walking the halls of power. It's a planning committee. It's not the UN. I see your eyes a twinkle. Oh, you're hallucinating. What the? What is this? You have been booted. No kidding. Hey. Hey, you. What's the big idea? You have four unpaid tickets. The fifth wins you the shoe. I do not have four unpaid tickets. Andrea Haskell, 443 North Harrison. Well, the sign right there says parking is good until 4 o'clock p.m. My watch says 3.58. Official city time is 4.02. Max, what time does your watch say? 4.02. Hey, well, wait, wait, wait. What about him? Why doesn't this car have a ticket, huh? Or do you only ticket Chadwick Faculty Officer Coleman? I am not paying this ticket. In fact, I'm challenging it and you with him as my witness. You do that. Traffic orders on Wednesdays. The number's on the back of your ticket. Have a nice day. <laughs> Bravo. Shut up. <laughs> I'd just love to see you exuding that reverence for small-town New England culture. Hey, how much? Uh, 1450 <laughs> Hold on a sec. What's your phone? What are you doing? You just slammed the door in her face. What is the big deal? It's rude. Oh, my God, Marnie. Hi, Nell. <laughs> hey, uh, come in, come in. Oh. Uh, Brenda Vanderpool, this is Marnie Ludlow. She went to Quinlan High with me. So you're working at Carmine's? 
what uh, what happened to the record store? Um, I'm just doing this nights to to make extra cash. Well, actually, if you guys don't mind, I got other orders out in the car. Yeah, yeah, Bren, you got this? No, I'm totally broke. Well, I'm broke too. I mean, I'm genuinely broke, not theoretically broke. Well, maybe she'll give us credit since you're a fellow townie and all. What's that supposed to be a slam? Sensitive much? I don't get pissed when you call me the bank. Besides, I pay for takeout all the time. You could pay once. Um, sorry, Lauren. The, uh, the tip's gonna be a little light. It's okay. Oh. I gotta run. Hey, let's hook up this week. I'll call you. Professor Bickford, Sam's Arnett, Chamber of Commerce. Thanks for meeting me. How are you? Uh, concerned. Concerned. I, I was just up visiting Parnell, your predecessor at the planning board. How's he doing? Uh, he'll pull through. Parnell's vote would have sent them all to the city council, and we'd have gotten this town back on its feet. Uh, your vote could kill it. Well, you have no idea how I would vote. Rest assured, I'd vote my conscience. That's all we can ask. Thanks. Professor Bickford, this is Chris Calhoun, the developer. I, I don't like him personally, but he's not an evil man. <laughs> His problem with me is I kick his ass in racquetball. Thanks for joining us. Happy to be here. I've known Mr. Zarnett for all of two blocks now, but I've always found him to be a fine and upstanding citizen. <laughs> now, Professor, the first thing you need to know is that I love this town. That's why I want to be a part of its growth. That and the fact that the city council is going to give you a sweetheart deal. This is my job. I'm not going to apologize for it. Now. You probably already know about the financial boost the mall will give to Quinlan, but maybe you haven't thought about the social impact. People need a place to get together, bump into neighbors. Kind of like what we used to do on Main Street before the malls came along. You know, people think of malls as some kind of bastard child of the 50s, but they actually have a rich history throughout the world. The Grand Bazaar in Istanbul, it was built in the 11th century. It's still around today. It was the 15th century. Professor Bigfoot? Hello. Professor Bigfoot. Hello, Clarissa. Good, I'm Chris. You know, Professor, we actually haven't had a chance to get acquainted. I started the Quinlan Preservation League to save New England silk snail. Uh, would you care to join us? Oh, well, all right. What's everyone having? Escargot. Endangered species du jour. <laughs> Do you see what we're up against here, Professor? Uh, I wouldn't make any assumptions here. I'm actually a free agent. We're getting the Professor up to speed on the economic impact of the mall so that businesses will actually come to Quinlan instead of leaving. Actually, we were just discussing the 300 new jobs, which could make Quinlan a vital community once more. It's quite vital now, if one considers the quality of life important. Or if you're a silk snake. Or lucky enough to have a rich husband willing to bankroll your volunteer activities. I am a full-time employee of the Quinlan Preservation League who chooses not to be paid. And I deeply resent anyone making this into a personal issue, especially a slick-talking snake oil salesman from out of town. Well, is it just me, or was that personal? Is there a point to any of this, or do you people just hate each other? Uh, actually, you the, take the point our is... bit of paradise and transform it into a giant concrete wasteland. Concrete wasteland? I have stated from day one that I am willing to integrate environmental benefits into the plan. Grass, trees, bike paths. It's a trap. Do you think we could keep the paranoia and the character assassination down to a bare minimum and just deal with the facts? I'll tell you the facts. A mall will bring more cars, which will bring a cry for more roads, which will mean even more cars, and then low-cost housing, which will bring more development, which will bring more people, which will bring more cars and more development. And where, in God's name, does it all end? Clarissa, if I had to live inside your head, I think I'd kill myself. Well, so much for quaint small-town life. Uh, I'm gonna leave now. Thanks so much. Uh, it's been very educational and... Very disturbing, and uh, thank you all. I'm going to go now before it turns violent. Bye. After nearly two years of detailed study, I'm happy to say we've reached a moment of truth. Today, I call a vote. Fellow committee members, are you for or against the current proposal to build a shopping mall at the Glen? How say you, Mr. Zonnet? Uh, a resounding four. 
Thank you, and Mr. Ott. Two fours, Miss Elkins. And equally resounding against. And Dr. Bickford. I actually didn't realize that you were going to call a vote today, Mr. Chairman. I, uh, I don't have enough information. I'm afraid I'm going to have to abstain. Professor, we need an answer today. Lest you forget, this vote will have a dramatic impact on Quinlan's future. I'm okay with a stay. We've waited two years. What's another few days? Good. So I'll give you my decision by Friday. Max. How could you do this to me, oh, Max? Oh, hold on, Arthur. You blindsided me. Now, instead of killing this thing in committee, you've given it a chance to go forward. Arthur, a long time ago, you taught me to question the question before you contemplate the answer. That's not germane to this. Yes, it is. You're asking, how do we stop this mall? I'm asking, should we stop this mall? Yes. Will destroy the glen. They're willing to add plants and trees and, 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 and bicycle paths, all to make it more people friendly and less car friendly. They're just throwing me a bone. How do you know? Because I've studied this, Max, for two solid years. I fully explored this issue. You fully explored one side of the issue. Some things are sacrosanct. The Glen is this town's only connection to a larger history. Will the Founding Fathers Mall protect the spirit of George Washington? George Washington fought a war for the right of self-determination. If these people want a mall, why shouldn't they get it? The popular choice isn't always the right one. Man. Arthur! Why did you want me for this job? Because you're a critical thinker. Unfortunately, you're also a pain in the ass. I learned from the best. Mr. Coleman. Hi. I didn't think you'd actually show up. Likewise, Dr. Haskell. After I cooled off the other day, I was embarrassed by the way I acted. So was I, Dr. Haskell. Andrea. Will, I overreacted to your overreacting. Overreacted? No, I wasn't overreacting. Okay. I overreacted. <laughs> <laughs> My dad was a naval officer. I have authority issues with men in uniform. I understand that. I was in the Marines for a few years. Oh. oh. Uh, um, so where was he stationed? Um, everywhere, really. Uh, he was a captain, um, a lifer. I grew up all over. A captain's daughter. Mm -hmm. So you went to the fancy schools and the cotillions and the teas? When you could get me off the firing range. That was the one place I could actually impress my father and his friends. Really? Mm -hmm. You still shoot? Not unless you count a paintball league that I was on in Boston. Hey, I may not look like it, but you get me on the course, and I am a stone-cold killer. Me and the guys at work have a regular game. You probably wouldn't want to play. It's Finland's finest. Why not? Hey, how's your dad? He's okay. He's having a hard time staying out of my life, but I'm training him. <laughs> well, tell him I said hi. How are you and Danny? Okay. Well, he couldn't get a job here, so he went down to North Carolina. He's working part-time at a furniture factory. We, we pushed the wedding back until we could get enough money, but it's hard since we're paying two rents. I feel like such an ass. Why didn't you call me and tell me this? Well, I've just been dealing. It's OK. No, it's not. No, I'm fine. I just had a crazy stretch. Well, at least you're not pregnant. <laughs> no way. Does Danny know? Not yet. It's only been two months. Um, he's too stressed out because of all our bills. Well, you can't work two jobs when you're pregnant. It's not healthy. Let me loan you some money. No, no way, Nell. I couldn't ask. Barney? Andrew, watch it! Yeah. 
that. No fair, Coleman. She's not an egghead, she's a ringer. Egghead? You call me an egghead? Uh, it's kind of a nickname for Chadwick professors. <laughs> A, um, what do you call it, a term of endearment. Like Brainiac or Poindexter. Oh, how sweet. You can take it. Not like you guys ever had to work a day in your life. Oh, we work as hard as you do, if not more. My sister cooks up at the college. She says you guys teach three days a week, get summers off, sit around reading books all day. I take that deal. I'm on six committees. I do research full time. I counsel students. I work maybe 60 to 70 hours a week. Hey, and the idea that all professors do is sit around reading books is about as dumb as saying that all cops do is sit around eating donuts. Although, to look at you, Baroni, maybe it's not such a dumb idea after all. Pete, why don't you start the next round? We'll catch up. Tact is not one of Baroni's strong suits. Well, why is he so resentful of Chadwick? What did we ever do to him? Most people in town know nothing about the place. I grew up here, and it might as well have been on the moon. Well, whose fault is that? The campus isn't under lock and key. It feels that way if you're from town. Then unlock it. Why don't you come visit? You'll see that it is no different than the real world. Hey, Bruce Lee. How'd the class go? It sucks. I hate it. I'm quitting. <laughs> Why? Because everybody's bigger than me. Even the girls are taller than me. Oh, Lester. You'll grow soon enough. Yeah, like you did? Forget it. I'm quitting. No, you're not. When you first signed up for this thing, you promised that you'd stick with it. How are you going to learn self-discipline if you quit on the first day? Well, what about you and your personal trainer? You promised me and Nell that you'd take yoga. You haven't been there in three weeks. That's different. Yeah, that's supposed to keep you from dropping dead. No, it's because it's my money. You want to blow $400 of your money? Feel free. I'll work it off my allowance. Okay, that means we'll be square on your 40th birthday. If you go back to your class, I'll go back to mine. Wait a minute. You are into me for mucho dinero, pal. You don't have a lot of negotiating power here. That's the deal, Dad. If I have to tough it out, so do you. Oh, are you gonna be at the Glen tomorrow? Me and my class are going to the Glen for some tribute thingy. What kind of a tribute thingy, exactly? Uh, I don't know. At least I'll get out of school early. Professor Dixon's going to the rally. Oh, now it's a rally. I thought it was a tribute. To Arthur, maybe. He got the local historical society to invite the elementary school. It's a brilliant tactic. That's one way to look at it. No one seems to understand the significance of this Glen. And perhaps if the children do, their parents will learn from them. Look, Professor, I, I want to apologize for my behavior the other day. <laughs> That's all right, Clarissa. There were no physical injuries, at least while I was there. I get so upset. 20 years ago, you could ride down Route 9 in the summer and smell the onion fields and the apple blossoms. Now, you smell diesel fuel. Well, on the other hand, 20 years ago, the local hospital where my daughter was born was 40 miles away. And uh, that night, it was a blizzard, and we almost didn't make it. My son was born a lot closer to home. Sometimes development isn't that bad. Well, hospitals save lives. Malls don't. Unless you need a job. <laughs> Hello, Professor. Clarissa! You're here for the groundbreaking ceremonies. You're a little early. Hey, one of the joys of small town life is people getting together. Memorial Day parades, little league games, fireworks mm -hmm. Public on Public stonings. I'm scoping out where some hideous parking structure can be erected to blight our pristine landscape. Well, you know, you got to admit, they're upfront about their plans. Actually, I'm educating myself. I want to learn as much as I can about Quinlan so that I can honor its heritage if I'm fortunate enough to build here. What do you got in mind? Founding Father's Tanning Salon? Well, let's just say if I were to build a statue of George Washington in the courtyard of the Founders Mall, a lot more people would visit the site and know its history than know about it now. Why do I feel that every word you say is a lie, Mr. Calhoun? I don't know, Clarissa. That would be a question for your psychiatrist. I believe I warned you about making this personal, you mendacious carpetbagger. The other possibility is that you're in love with me. <laughs> <laughs> You know, if I didn't know better, I'd think you two were married. Why don't you both get a grip, okay? Answer a question. What are you going to do if you get turned down in Quinlan? I'll build further up the interstate. Which means we'll end up with the same problems, traffic, pollution, sprawl, but without any of the jobs. What would you do if you were me? 
drink poison. Enjoy the festivities, Professor. I have often spoken of the sanctity of this glen, but 226 years ago, a young officer in George Washington's army wrote a letter to his wife that expresses it far better than I ever could. My dear Rebecca, we were ambushed yesterday and were saved only by General Washington's will to survive. We retreated under cover of the setting sun into a glen just east of the Berkshire Mountains. And though we could barely feel our feet for the cold, it provided us with shelter from the wind and our enemy. Throughout the long night, the general visited every tent and every fire. I think he never slept. And then this morning when we awoke, the sun, which we hadn't seen in a fortnight, rose high over the mountain and warmed each man to his bones. It cast a godly light upon that glen. We march again at noon, and I feel we will be victorious. And though I am loath to leave the safety of this glen, I know I will return to it one day in peace with you, my beloved Rebecca. With love, Captain Daniel E. Quinlan, February the 25th, 1776. Captain Quinlan, of course, never did return here. He died in battle in his brother Thomas's arms later that month. But Thomas Quinlan did return to honor a brother and to found a town. We are all a part of their legacy. I was in the neighborhood. He said to stop by. See, it's easy once you get past the moat and the alligators. Nice office. You've read all these? Most of them. I've even written a few myself. Five books? I guess you do work for a living. I find something I'm interested in, and I can't stop thinking about it. I'm the same way. Hey, you wrote a book on Elvis. I just finished Last Train in Memphis. Well, mine was more about Elvis the concept, not Elvis the man. What was Elvis's first gold record? A Heartbreak Hotel, 1956, eight weeks top of the charts. <laughs> You're gonna have to do better than that, my friend. Okay. What was the name of Elvis's twin brother? Elvis had a twin brother? Jesse. He died six hours after birth. Oh, hoo -hoo. you stopped the professor. That wins you one free autographed copy of my book. Sounds like you're a real music buff. I am. Particularly root stuff, blues and country. I teach a class on American musical culture. Why don't you come? This week I'm talking about folk music, you know, Woody Guthrie, the class struggle, the Great Depression. Well, if you want to learn about the Great Depression, just step off campus. Quinlan isn't really in a depression. Yeah, not unless you're looking for a job. But hey, maybe we'll get lucky and land that mall. Oh, building that mall will send me into a Great Depression. It will ruin Quinlan. Ruin it for who? For you? Because you care more about uh, Quinlan the concept than Quinlan the town? Hey, I live here. I went to Chadwick for four years. I have just as much right as... You know what? I gotta get going. I'm late for work. It's nice seeing you, Andrea. Wait a minute, Will. If this mall is supposed to bring more jobs to local people, then why would it necessarily bring more crime? Because there's no guarantee that local people will get those jobs. If people from around the state or, or around the country hear that there are jobs in Quinlan, we'll attract a new element to town. A new element? And what does that mean? Businesses expand, which brings in immigrant laborers who overwhelm the school system, the police, and the hospitals. 
So you're opposed to development because it'll attract poor people. I didn't say that. Oh, yes, you did. And if you no, think that's that that not what really I meant. Hold it. Saying. If I wanted to listen to people yelling at one another, I'd go back to the real planning commission meeting. All we ever hear about is how businesses harm the environment. What about how environmentalists harm the economy? But do they? Here's a list of corporate donors to the Quinlan Preservation League. We have big time corporate backing. These companies want to protect our ecosystem because it's good business. And it's a nice gesture because a lot of those companies did a lot of the original damage to begin with. Like the Hill Ridge Construction Corporation, which is one of the biggest developers in the Commonwealth and is at the top of this list. Hill Ridge gave money locally? That's brilliant. Why do you say that? Because last week, when our mall stalled, they filed a petition to build one 30 miles from here. Don't you see? They gave money to the Preservation League to block our mall. You treat Calhoun like the devil incarnate, but you seem to have no trouble at all with Hill Ridge financing Clarissa's environmental report. They didn't influence her report. They helped to find her a wider audience. Arthur, Hill Ridge is manipulating you and Clarissa. They're part of our coalition. We have different interests. We have one aim, to protect. Protect what? The local community from itself? In this instance, yes. Your son is growing up in a vanishing world. It's safe. He can walk to school. He's part of a community. Isn't it worth preserving our heritage? Arthur, this heritage thing is a double-edged sword. In 1952, when you first came to Chadwick, they were using the heritage argument to keep the Jewish professors out. I fought that from the first day. Yes, so that by the time I came along, my ethnicity was no big deal. You have fought for change your whole life. Why are you so afraid of it now? Because this mall isn't progress. It's a crime. Will, what happened to you? He never gave me a chance to explain myself. Why bother? You were going to talk about preserving Quinlan's character? You don't know anything about this town's character. I've lived here five years. And four of them you were a student. We're the same age, Andrea. I went to the movies, the public library, the grocery store, the local bars. How come you and I never met back then? How come we only met now? Because I wrote you a parking ticket. Here's why. Because I live in Quinlan, and you live at Chadwick. I live... On Harrison Street, in Quinlan. You want to teach your students about class struggle? Don't read some book. Come spend a late Saturday night at the Quinlan jail. Come have them see all the drunks and the domestic abuse and the bar fights because there's no work in this town. Hey, I know the economy's lousy. Do you? Uh-huh. Then how can you talk about preserving our architectural integrity? Here's a concept. This town isn't old buildings with gingerbread trim. It's people. Give me a break, Will. You think we're snobs. You're just as bad with your working man's chip on your shoulder. You would rather stick to your stereotype about me than discuss it. I invite you to my class, you don't show up. So you want to be bitter, fine, be bitter. Fight your parking ticket gorilla war. Arthur, you're holding another rally? Not much of a turnout. This is the spot where Washington camped? I thought it was beyond those marsh grasses. It was. But this is the place where Elaine and I came to write and read and think. We planted these 45 years ago. We were working on our book on the revolution and we realized that Washington had been here. Elaine had just found out that she couldn't have children, so we planted these elms to mark our time together. They're beautiful. You probably think that I'm a selfish, sentimental old man, and perhaps I am. But I devoted my life to the preservation of history. I guess when it comes to my own, uh, at this time in my life... Uh, Martha and I planted two oaks in our backyard when Lester and Nell were born. How tall are they now? Oh, not very. Not yet. But I think I would 
throw myself in front of a chainsaw if anyone wanted to cut them down. Then you vote with me to protect this place? Arthur, this isn't my backyard. And it's not yours, either. This place belongs to everybody. And that makes it very complicated. You disappoint me, Max. Well, I guess there's a lot of that going around, Arthur. <sighs> Arthur, what happened to you? Why are you so high-handed, Max? You were with me on this from the beginning. If it wasn't for me, you wouldn't be here. You wouldn't even be in Quinlan. That's not fair, Arthur, and you know it. What I know is that you should vote against this mall. And if you won't, you should step down from the committee. What would you gain from that? The vote would be tied, and I'd gain a little breathing room. Arthur, don't you think you're sentimentalizing this place beyond all sense? Will you step down? Why would I do that? Because you owe me that much. Some southern states even segregated the music, which meant that stores couldn't sell race records by black artists next to white or hillbilly artists. We're talking about bluegrass, how it's cherished as the music of disaffected rural whites, especially Scottish and Irish immigrants. But it also has a lot of African music in it, blues and gospel. So like everything else, it's not as simple as people think. Would you agree? Uh, <clears throat> well, I, I guess I would. You know, Bill Monroe, the founding father of bluegrass music, admits his style was influenced by Arnold Schultz, a black blues guitar player he knew in Kentucky. Dad? I'm practicing my yoga. I forgot how to breathe. Yoga? No way, so, so you're sticking with it. <laughs> when I make a promise... Marnie, is that you? Hi, Professor Bigford. I haven't seen you since last summer. What's new? She's engaged, pregnant, and moving to North Carolina on Monday. Oh, that's not much. <laughs> well, congrats on all three. Why North Carolina? My fiancé got a job down there, which is great, though we didn't really want to move. Are you kidding? It'll be awesome. You're not missing anything here. Danny's folks, and you. But it's not like we had any choice. That's where the work is. Anyway, I just wanted to say goodbye, Professor Bigford. It might be a while before I get back this way. Be well. last drink at this bar four years ago. 18-year-old McCallum. Seems like yesterday. You know, we gave you a bar stool to Marty. Does he still come in? Every night after 10. How do you do it, Larry? How do you own a bar and stay sober? It's always baffled me. I couldn't do it. Seeing people drunk every day reminds you why you quit. It's like a two-way mirror on the worst parts of human nature. It sounds exactly like the feeling I have being on this committee. Could have warned you, Max. Why'd you agree to do it? A favor to Arthur, a service to the town, example to the students. <laughs> no good act goes unpunished. Well, do one for me, Max. Vote for them all. Don't let Arthur kill it in committee. We need it, desperately. Okay, I'm confused. The entire city council has already announced it'll approve them all if it gets out of our committee. You, as the mayor, have already publicly announced you're the lone vote against it. Now you want me to vote for it? Uh, what is that that you're drinking? It's not ginger ale. Politics, Max. Chadwick opposes them all. So I vote no. Everybody else on the council votes yes. The mall gets built. The college still loves me. As Harry Truman once said, my choice early in life was either to be a piano player in a whorehouse or a politician. To tell the truth, there's hardly any difference. That used to be your campaign slogan, as I recall. Well, what the hell can I do? 
Chadwick is the 800-pound gorilla in this town. I have to placate them, however much I resent them. Why is Chadwick the heavy here? Pump a lot of money into the economy, don't we? Yeah, right. But we're like a movie set to you guys, a backdrop you can roll out on alumni weekends. You don't actually give a rat's ass about the economic fate of this town. Look, Max, aside from Chadwick, what does this town really have? An empty tire plant. Now, the irony is, I own a bar. I mean, more and no more, my business will prosper. It's the rest of the town that will suffer without it. Do the right thing, Max. Get us this mall. A lot of people are counting on it. And so I vote against this destructive mall. That's two for and one against. Your vote, please, Professor Bickford. I walked here today. I, I started at the Glen, and I walked past my son's junior high and a couple of nursing homes and at least 10 churches. I walked past the old mill that Thomas Quinlan founded when he started the town. He was a surprisingly progressive owner. He encouraged all of the women workers to educate themselves. And one of them, Mary Chadwick, went on to found the college. I was struck by the irony. Chadwick, Quinlan, and the Glen are as inextricably linked as they are divided by their own self-interest. The importance of the Glen can't be overstated. Then I walked by the empty tire plant that opened the very same year that the mill shut down and was responsible for somewhere between 100 and 350 full-time jobs until five years ago when it also closed. This town was born by the mill, kept alive by the tire plant, and will die without the jobs that are provided by the mall. I would like to save the Glen, but the paradox of doing that is that the spirit of the Glen is that of sudden and powerful change, as in the American Revolution. A great historian once said that history is not a monument. It is an ever-changing, unrelenting force of nature. And you were right about that, Arthur. It is. The past is colliding with the present. And if we let the past win, if we let the past strangle the present, we will be held accountable by history for the death of Quinlan. I vote for selling the land to Mr. Calhoun. The founding father's mall moves forward to the city council. The services of this committee has come to a close. Arthur? Arthur? Hey, Dad. Hey, that was Taekwondo. Oh, awesome. I was the first one in my class to get moved up to Yellow Belt. Great. And you wanted to quit. Yeah, thanks for making me go back. How'd your voting thing go? Well, the town got some new jobs and new stores, and I lost an old friend. Oh, you mean Arthur? Hopefully he'll come to realize why I did what I did. And you'll be friends again. Hope so. 
Me too. Why don't you do some yoga to relax? I am doing yoga. This is the couch potato position. Come on, teach me. I'll do it with you. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is the tree pose. Ready? Thank you, Grasshopper. Keep it up for another 45 minutes. <laughs> Stay tuned for scenes from our next episode. Two weeks from tonight on Max Bickford. Stop, dear mom, make your opinions count. Doyle Dumont is coming to this campus, bringing an arch conservative to raise hell. This battle isn't over. Say no! Are you shutting down the administration building? I look at Mel and I see you. She's a real Bickford, isn't she? She seems so fierce and determined. Well, now you know what it's like to deal with you. The true story of...